All right, how's everyone tonight? Bless. 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 God spoke in such a way on this lesson tonight that I got happy twice. And that's good for me. Okay, what happened? Okay, let's turn to uh, lessons coming out of uh, Hebrews 10 tonight. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to begin there with the scripture reading, and then we're going to see what God has to say to us tonight in regards to a subject which is, for your information, living beyond faith talking. All right. Living beyond faith talking. We talk a good faith. But we need to live beyond talking about it. what God said. Amen. Oh, we read about faith and we talk about, about you know, God, the word said this about faith and, and I'm so clever and I look out there and I see how God is blessing everybody and then you talk about somebody else's blessing. What has he done for you lately? Okay. Do we have it? Do we have it? Hebrews chapter 10. Yes. Okay. Beginning at verse number 19. It says here, Having therefore, brethren, what? By a new living way which he hath consecrated us through the veil that what? Is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Hallelujah. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with what? Pure water. water. Let us hold fast the profession, the profession of our faith, faith, faith mm -hmm. without wavering. Uh -huh, for he what? Faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Nor forsake what? The assembling of ourselves. What does that mean? <laughs> Come on together as a church. Don't go home and say, I'm listening to T.D. T. D. Jakes. T.D. Shakes. You be in the house of God. You hear what God has to say. As the manner of some is. But exhorting what? One another. And so much more. For if we sin, what? Willfully. After we have what? The knowledge of the truth. What? There remains no more sacrifice for sins. Who died for our sins? Jesus. And he was our sacrifice. Amen. But a certain what? Fearful looking for our judgment. And fiery nation. Which shall survive our adversaries. He that despiseth what? Moses' law. What? Died without mercy. Of how much more suppose ye shall ye be thought who hath trod underfoot what and hath what wherewith he was an unholy thing and hath what for we know him that hath said. Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye entered a what? Great fire of affliction. Partly what? While I remain in the days of God, both of our reproaches and afflictions, and partly while we became. 
that were so used. For ye had compassion of me, what? And so joyfully, what? Knowing in yourself that what? Ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast away, therefore, your confidence, what? For he, for ye have that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For a little while, and he that shall come and will not tarry. Now, the judge shall live by faith. Uh huh. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not them who draw back to the perdition. What is so great about this lesson is on Sunday I was teaching uh, about salvation, about being saved, and how what had to be done for the people to, to attain salvation. And we had talked about the bulls and goats being offered up. The first part of this book, uh, of that chapter, talks about that. But we're coming down to this portion because it's telling us that Jesus Christ it was our eternal sacrifice. Amen? Amen. And he died under sin how many times? Once. Once. He's not coming back to die or sin again. But he, in that he died, he died under sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen? Amen? Who said that? The Word said so. So we're here seeing that we are concentrating on faith. The faith what? The, the, the topic we're going to be discussing tonight is Living beyond faith talk. Living beyond faith talk. Everybody talks about faith. But what are you living? How are you walking? Faith has to be put in, has to be put into practice. You can no longer say, I know by faith God opened up the Red Sea. I know by we need to stop. How many Red Seas have God opened for you? But we have become so used to what God has done that we don't realize God does something for us every day. Amen. Amen. You open your eyes, boom, in the morning, it's God who did it. Yes. When you take inhale and exhale, it's because being God did it. Amen. Okay. Now, the lesson says, Christians lead defeated lives and struggles with the tactics that the enemy sets before us because we forget to One. Two. We walk by faith and not by sight. Three. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Four. All things work together for good. And five. We are more than conquerors. The just shall walk by faith. Those who have been converted, those who are converted believers, who are converted into being believers, we have to remember this. That we have to walk by faith. Because the just shall walk by faith. Because we trust in one person. And that is who? God. God. And we put a trust in God. Everything else is taken care of. Amen. The world tells me, trust in the Lord all thine hearts. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways, what? In how many ways? In all of our ways. All of our ways in the What happens? He shall direct our path. The reason we get hung up because we don't acknowledge Him in all of our ways. We acknowledge Him for our food, for our raiment, but when a toughie comes, we decide to worry. When a challenge comes, we want to handle it. When you get a ticket for breaking the law, you want to be upset. But if we would learn how to, in all our ways, you don't think, oh, oh, God didn't see you get that ticket? He saw you get the ticket. But he wants to make a way out of it. Let me get share a, 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 an experience with you. Last Friday night, I was on 207, trying, trying to get to my wife so we could come to church. And if you go down 207, there's a street called Commerce Street. Commerce Street will take you through, mm -hmm. through the uh, police station and take you out all that traffic. You take a shortcut, you can resolve that traffic, you can loop, loop around, 
and get ahead of that traffic. I did just then. <laughs> and I saw Christmas lights on a car that I had to obey. I pulled over. And the first thing we want to yell is Jesus. And what Jesus wants to say, I didn't get the ticket, you did it. And you broke the law. But even in those kinds of things, God works stuff out of you to let him, let him take care of it. So when man came to my car, not only did I, and I just agreed with him, was young, uh, but I did not see the sign that says, you can't go through that area. He said, well, who's there? And I'll, am I going to argue with him? Oh, no. <laughs> then, he says, registration and my license. My license was fine. And your insurance card. Had the wrong insurance card. Had the wrong registration. I didn't get one ticket. Oh, wow. I got three. Yes. One because I went through that parking lot. Two because I had the wrong registration. And three, I didn't have the right insurance card. So the Lord told me, tap him. Because within the town, he was in, he was in New Orleans. And the Lord said, well, okay. something's wrong. It's okay. And you walk by three, it's okay. Okay! <laughs> so, after you go to all the tickets out, the Lord told me that tell him that you're an administrator in, in New Orleans School District. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, why did you tell me that when I stopped you? He says, these two tickets, I'm going to do away with them. He said, the third ticket, when you show up in court, I'm going to squash that one too. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's favor. Yes. And by faith, I believe God will going to fix it. And guess what happened? He fixed it. And, and, and according to the law of the land, I was supposed to pay all that. Mm -hmm. But God wiped the slate clean because I walked by... Faith. And not by Sorry. it looked horrible. Yeah, but God fixed it for me. Yeah, so the judge can only walk by faith, but we have to live, live by faith. I don't care what happens, live by faith that God's going to take care of it. Alright, I guess that sounds crazy. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And first of all, the word says, without faith. It's impossible to please God. We can't please God unless we have. We cannot please God unless we have faith. And what is faith? Trust in God. Believe in God. Allowing God to work with it. Now I believe it says in, uh, in, in, in the faith chapter. What, what does it say? The, the first verse. Now. Faith. Now faith. So, so. Now faith is. Yeah. And you know. A lot of times we take that for granted. We think that when he's saying now that, that God just took a pause and says, well now. But we use now really, you know, really loosely. Yes. Now sit down. Now I'm tired of you. And we just use it fruitlessly. But the word says what? Now. Right? Now, now faith is. Mm -hmm. What is faith? Now. Now. When we live by faith? Now. now. When do you need help with your situation? By faith. Now. Hmm. Okay. Let me see now. now. So we know about all. And you know, once we live by faith, we do become more than conquerors. Yes. We live by faith. Things do work together for good. Yes. We mistakenly think that God's word said, for we know that all things are good. Work together. It works together for good. Yes. It's not good, but it works together Forward. That means that old nasty person that you met uh, uh, at the store, that the woman who was waiting on you, who got nasty with you. You don't have to lay her out. Sure. Who will take care of you? God. God will. Because I think it said somewhere in uh, chapter 10, vengeance of mine, say it to the Lord, I will. And no, one, they, no one gets away with doing you bad to you. No, but if you decide to, to take it on, to take it on yourself, you took, you took God out of it. And the only result you get is what you did. Yeah. Okay, now. It, back to 
the lesson text. It is important that what? Every Christian start reading about faith and talking about faith and beginning exercising faith right now. Oh, that's the declaration God's making us to us. We can talk about it real good. Yes. We read about it real nicely. But are we doing it? It says here it's important that every Christian what? Stop reading. Stop talking about faith. And begin exercising faith right now. When? Now. Right now. We read about faith what? As if it was only something in the past. And we do. We do. It's something that happened back in the Old Testament. It's something that happened today. We killed a big old giant. And that's where we stay. That's the mindset we said. Faith is something that happened in the past. I'm not saying everybody does that. But we have the propensity to think that way. We've got to stop that. We read, okay, we talk about faith. In regards to something that happened, something that happened and works for someone else. Someone else. Now, how many of you have faith for somebody else? We do. So it come to me. Oh, please, God gonna fix that. And we got, and I got faith to believe that for you. But when my challenge comes along, oh, I hope God takes care of me. I'm trying to do the right thing. Instead of proclaiming, God's gonna fix this. Yes. Okay. I guess I, I don't need to go there. <laughs> Many Christians what? Are afraid, are afraid to put their faith into action, action because, because they do not know how to trust God. God. Ah. When we walk by faith, we got to believe God's going to do the situation for us. But the trouble with the people of God, we try to justify God not doing it. Oh, you don't want to hear that. God says he's going to do something and if our faith stands strong, he'll do it. But we try to give God a way out. And if God needs a way out. Just in case God don't. Just in case God doesn't do it. I'm going to stand on that disclaimer. That it wasn't his will. That gets God off the book, right? Y'all, well, just may own up to it. I don't want God to be put on the hook. Let me say it's not God's will. What is God's will? Say it. His word. If it's in His word, it's His will. I don't think the, think the people of God go to God with stupid stuff. Long go drums. Let me hear you. What do you say? <laughs> Thank you. Long go drums says, Amen. Ralph, it's true. God does not need a way out. In your Bibles, let me ask you a question. In your Bibles, what's the first book of the Bible? Genesis. Genesis. What does it say? In the beginning. In the beginning what? It doesn't say once upon a time. It's not a fairy tale. We're so busy to listen. Once upon a time, Uncle Remus went to the store. It doesn't say that. In the beginning, God. So it's not a fairy tale. It's a true fact. In the beginning, God. Then if you go to St. John chapter 1, it says what? In the beginning, what? It was God. What's the word? And the word was? And the word? So in both of those, in the beginning, God's trying to tell us something. In the beginning, God. But I'm going to tell you what. The end of, this, of the book says, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you. And you know to be happy, live happily ever after? You know to live happily ever after? Okay. Put on your thinking hats. And not just thinking caps. Because that's what it boils down to. We will live happily ever after. Because we say, come Lord Jesus. Okay. All right. Let's go back where it says many Christians are afraid. Many Christians are 
afraid to put their faith into action because they do not know how to trust God. Many Christians have sleepless nights because of worry, because they fail to trust God. Many Christians need to abandon and defeat the spirit of doubt and begin building their confidence in God. Oh no, confidence in the Ouija board. No, the horoscope. No, what, what grandmom told you when you, if you just go outside, eat four lemons and chew up the skin and throw the dust in front of your house. No. It's all about who? God. God. And we need to build a confidence in God. Just as we learned on Sunday that when God says seven, seven, what? He means seven. seven. His word also is His word. word. And it comes, it and when it comes to faith, what? It works. It works. Faith really works. Faith really works. works. If you work faith, faith will work for you. All right. Many are plagued with the mindset that it's the Now isn't that right? <laughs> isn't that correct? It is. What do you think about that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, that's what he does not need any help. That's why God messed up in the beginning. Because you tried to help God out. Now look, I've got some examples for you. Sarah helped God out. <laughs> Thank you. And, and that's why we have mess today in the Mideast because of Sister Sam. <laughs> okay, do I need to make it clear to you what I'm talking about? Let me tell you something. Those are cousins over there fighting each other. The, the line of the lineage of, of Ishmael and lineage, lineage of Isaiah. Guess who their daddy was? Abraham. And God told Abraham, you won't have a boy. But Sarah said, mm, I'm old. I'm back too weak. I can't be carrying no nine months. Ha, ha, ha. Then when they, when they go over there, Hagar and have that baby for Abraham. She did it. Then came out, who got mad over? Sarah. And caused a mess. Get Hagar out, sit her out, chase her away. And that's why we have the mess today in the Mideast. Because of Sarah. Okay. But, if they, but she walked by faith, believe in God. And she even chuckled when the angel told her, you won't have a baby. Here I am 125 years old, and I'm going to have some baby. You have got to be kidding. But did it come to pass? Yes. Why did it come to pass? Because, because God promised it. God brought the promise to pass. Okay. Again, many are plagued with the, in the, with the mindset that it is physically, philosophically correct to have uh -huh. but the best way of overcoming faithlessness is Abraham. Romans chapter 4 lists four factors that tell us how to what? And the first thing Abraham did, what? Not to be overcome. What? By what God was suggesting. Romans 4.20 says what? He staggered not at the promise of God, who am I to believe, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. We need to learn not to stagger at what God said, and give, be strong in our faith and give Him the glory. Thank God now about what you, what you want God to do tomorrow, but thank you for it when. Right now. Abraham did not or By giving God, giving glory, what? Yeah. What happened? If we learn how to give God the glory in our situation, guess what's going to strengthen? Our, our faith will strengthen. 
Our faith will be strengthened. God wants to strengthen our faith. Yes or no? Yes. What does stagger mean? Stagger means to make you for one's own judgment and reason deserve. We'll try to get Stagger means to make use of one's own judgment and reason deserve. To stagger at the promise is to When God promises something, you're going you can to expect difficulty. Because who's going to throw obstacles in your way? And why does he want that to happen? To discourage you and that you will stagger in what God said he was going to do. As you receive the promises of God, you will have to what? Sometimes, How can this happen? What? You might ask. What? The only answer is God said it would be. Even when you see no natural way, it can come about. When you don't see any natural way, it's going to come about. You have to just walk by faith, believing that God's going to do what He says He's going to do. If God promises it, God will fulfill it. And you just need to stand on it and believe it. Have you ever been in, have any of you ever been in impossible situations? Yes. yes. Did God ever fix it? Yes, he did. Always. I love it. Yes. Always. Yes. Because God is God, besides him being another. Yes. All we need to do is what? Yes. Believe and trust in the Lord. And look for it to happen. Yes. No, hope for it to happen. Yes. Surmise that it's going to happen. Yes. Get out your Ouija board and ask it a question. See where it's going to lead you to. Look, Look for it to happen. You won't be using no black magic to get with God. You have to use witchcraft with God. God is God. Amen. Okay. It says here, you must still and now there's where it comes hard. You have to what? Refuse. To what? Stagger and unbelief. Unbelief plagues all of us. Pulls at all of us. But we even have to learn how to stand against all of that nonsense and refuse to stagger it in unbelief. When you doubt, listen to this, when you doubt, what happens? That is why a lot of things don't happen by faith because you're sitting around there trying to make it come to pass. And God said, trust in yourself at all times. And lean not to your Some of y'all think you're so smart. You got it all figured out. And it's a mess. Okay. Okay. You're on the call. Okay. On the call. That only what? Okay. When you doubt, you focus on that unbelief is you want to doubt to say then you want to believe to say then you you said oh you kept looking at things in the natural physical or temporal Peter started out what then he took a close look at the waves and then, what happened? Unbelief is the end result of focusing on your own power. Whoa, your own power. Any waves in your life that's pulling you down? You don't have to, but it will. And you can't blame God. Okay. The second one. Alright. What's your faith is supposed to do? What's your faith is supposed to do? Grow, Grow increase. Because everybody is given a 
Uh, hope, no, the past is giving more faith than you all. A measure of faith, and it's up to us to make that faith what? Grow. grow. When does your faith grow? During test. Yeah. During your test and trial is when your faith grows. Yeah. So when the test comes, you can say, I'm looking for it to grow. That's what he mean? Let me see. Look for it to grow. Look for it to grow. Okay, is this spot up here? But what does it mean? It means you have to go, when you, when you go through something and, and you come out of it, then your faith sh should grow. Okay, and what does it do? I mean, you're right, you're right, you're right on. But what does that help you do? It motivates you to believe in God that the next thing that's Say it, say it, say it. It motivates you to believe in God that the next thing is going to be fine because he took care of it of the first time. Absolutely. That's how you go in faith. But all faith does is prepare you for the big year that's coming. And then when you get into the habit of believing God and everything that comes up before you, then you begin to grow in grace and faith and in grace. And what God wants to do is for that to be so automatic. Yes. That come what may, God is going to take care of it. And I am not going to stagger at the promises. I'm going to believe God is going to take care of it. But no, we go home, get in the bed, and have a sleepless night. Because God's word tells us distinctly, you shall not slumber nor sleep. He oh, doesn't slumber nor sleep. That's right. The word doesn't say that. The word says, God neither slumbers nor sleep. So why are you both standing up? <laughs> You know what God told us? Well, God don't get tired. God is God. God is just as awake. God never slumbers. God never sleeps. And you think you got it? Uh-uh. You're not God. You need to do what? Sleep. Sleep. Because, see, if you don't get some sleep, you get ugly. Oh, stop now. Oh, not me. You do get ugly. And sit. Don't you catch me tired. I will not be saying Atamashanta. I say, you get away from me. Because what happens? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's weak. It'll stick out and act ugly. Mm -hmm. Because you are tired. You ever see somebody snap when they're tired? How are you doing today? I'm fine, how are you? Ooh, did you sleep last night? <laughs> Guess what you need? Sleep and a snicker. <laughs> no, not to snicker. That snicker. Not to snicker. <laughs> but you do need you need sleep. Because the next day you refresh and new. Your flesh cannot go forth. Your flesh will let you down every time. And your flesh will embarrass you. Oh yeah. It will. Yes. You go to check into a hotel and lay out. The woman tell you room not made, not ready, or gave away to somebody else, boy. Then they look on your card, they say, oh, this is past the so-and-so, so-and-so. No, then they'll come back, are you past the so-and-so? Yes, I am. Well, why are you talking like that, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> because your flesh has overtaken you. And God could control you because you needed to rest. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about Abraham some more. He grew strong in faith. What? Because God endured difficult times. We need to do what? He endured difficult times. There's nothing so difficult that God can't handle. I don't care what it happens. God is always looking out for us. God is always what? Out to what comes up? Out to how someone tries to twist the turn and do do something against us. We have to worry about it. God have has all that in check. And he will not let us go anywhere that we're not supposed to. 
Okay. I guess that don't make sense. It makes sense to me. Because a difficult time to come, but faith. Like, when your faith is strong, you just. I, I never understood apostles always was able to take a hard thing and say, oh, that ain't nothing. Yeah. He's always done that. From a young man. From a younger man. Boy, I remember we went to Pennsylvania for a revival. And we just all getting our boat by brand new suits. Boy, we were sharper than a chap. We were putting out there clean. <laughs> on the way back, we had to get the train back to New York. We were standing on the platform waiting for the train and track to pick us up. But a freight train went through first. Whoosh! It sucked my, my uh, suitcase and a pause suitcase right from under our leg under, under the train. And you know, I was hot. I ran, trying to run, he, and he had to grab me. He had to grab me because I was angry. He said, let that step go. I said, well, we just fight our salute. He says, let that go. He said, what you don't understand is the devil was trying to kill you. Because if you went any closer under that train, it would have sucked you under there, and you would have been dead. Now I wouldn't even think about that. But he knew the trick of the enemy. And he was saving whose life? My yeah. life. And he, and he made really light of what the devil had done. And guess what we go? go? Guess what we go? We go back to New York. Some more suits. But he staggered up the promise of God. He had the faith to believe that it was all going to be all right. He knew that it was a trick. He had so much wisdom at the back of those days. And I'm still trying to get some of that. And downplay the trick of the enemy. Down glass, so what? You lost that, so what? That wasn't God's timing for you. But I have faith to believe that God's going to make it His timing. Nothing will be done before His time. Because God has the time clock. And sometimes God will stop it, or suddenly He'll click it, and let it run. Alright, that made any sense. Okay. So, His faith grew, His He grew strong in faith because He endured difficult times. All too often, what? The first thing we find in difficult times is, get me out of this stuff. Here is a example of someone who was able to endure trials and grow in faith and set a lot of unbelief to grow. Faith is developed by learning from those in the ages past who God never let down for this world. The faith chapter, which is Hebrews 11, lists what? They what? Strong faith. In honor, in honors. Now, if you read chapter eleven, it continues to say, "By faith, so and so did so and so. By faith, so and so did so and so." What God is trying to tell us tonight, He wants to say, "By faith." La Boy, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. By faith, Iris, blah, 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 blah. By faith, Jackie, blah, 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 blah. By faith, Elijah, blah, 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 blah. God wants us to get on that faith honor also yeah. and be able to testify by faith this stuff happened for so-and-so because they had faith to believe God. Uh, okay. Are we getting that? Yes. Are we hearing it? Yes. Now are we going to put it into action? Yes. Because we need to let God fix it, not us. Amen. God always knows what he's doing. Yes, yes he does. God, what I love about God, you know, we as people, I told you this before, we as saints of God, we always have a backup plan. Yeah. We do. Well, if that doesn't work, hit my backup plan. Guess who don't have a backup plan? God, he has a plan. And he'll back it up. <laughs> but the world has taught us, you got to have a backup plan. If you have faith in God, the backup plan is already in place. Yeah, I, never, I never read in the word where it says, and God back. I never read what God said. Okay, David, I want you to kill, I want you to kill a lion. But I got a backup plan. If that 
no more? If you can't kill with those fires and stuff? Oh, we just did I do old boulder, I said to I throw that at you. God didn't say that. Because God knew those five stones were going to work. Amen. Everything you're going through, God said it's going to work by faith if you believe and trust in me. Yes. Mm. You, See, this is helping me tonight. Amen. I don't know if it's helping anybody else. But it's helping me. Yeah. Because the devil comes in like an angel of light. No, no, like an angel of light. I'll think of you to say something. Jump the gun. Wants to try to second guess. Y'all do the same thing to God, trying to second guess. Yeah. His next move. Yeah. 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 You can't second guess God. And God never comes the same way every time. Because you will not be calculated. Okay. The third thing that Abraham did, what? He gave glory to God. Why? What? What? With this same kind of unfortunate comments and all of God's promises, you too can bring glory to God. The key word there is unquestioning what? Confidence in all God's promises. We have to understand the word of God is the word of God that's right. It does not have to be amended. The Constitution has to be amended because they think there's something else they want to put in it. God's already put everything in the Word. Amen. Okay. Amen. We just need to know how to glorify God in all things. It glorifies God when you Trust him. you actually become a witness to His faithfulness and goodness when you will find His promises and you trust in Him. Now, let me tell you a secret. When a farmer plants a seed in uh, in, a, in the uh, spring, he does all he can. He plows up the ground, throws in the seed, and he walks away from it. Because he has confidence. He's done everything he's supposed to do. And what's going to happen? It's going to grow. He should go back and check it every day to see. Is it still in there? Because he's done all the right things to make that seed grow. God wants our faith to be just like that. Put our faith in Him and walk away from Him. Uh, oh, what's He talking about now? I gotta go back and check that. No, that's what we need to do. Walk away from it, knowing God's gonna fix it. Yes. Knowing God's gonna produce it. Because not that I said so, but God said so. And God is not slack concerning His the way some men count slack. If God said it, it's gonna happen. But we have to trust me. The fourth thing Abraham exhibited was he was what? Fully assured. Fully assured. Ooh. And having been fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to do. Well, isn't that interesting? But he had promised he's what? Why do we why do we waver at that? Because humans can't trust another human, and we have tried to trust a human, and they messed up and didn't fulfill their promise. If I make a promise, I work all I can to do what I say I'm going to do. If I can't do that, I go back and let the person know I way ahead of time that I can't do that. And then guess what? That's an honorable word. And God will bless that. But when you say, I'm going to show up tomorrow, I'll be there all the time. And three days pass, you ain't never showed up. That means your word is a lie. Is a what? It's a, it's a lie. Okay. I guess I, I should have said that tonight, right? But we have to be fully assured because we not only can God make a promise, but He's able also to fulfill it. We too must what become fully assured. Isaiah forty six eleven says what? Yeah, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. 
Malachi. Or I am the Lord, I change not. God assures us that when his promise is able to bring it to pass. The grass with it, the thought of our David, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Forever. And I love that it's saying here that with the Malachi, but I spoke of that on Sunday. That does the fact that God does not change, does that apply only to time? Oh no, it applies to our walk with God. For I am the Lord, I change not. God's not going to change for me or you. Because if He if He would change for me and you, that meant God was unstable. And God is not unstable. He's unstable in all his ways. It says a double-minded man's what? In all his ways. And we're not to be double-minded. Abraham had the Greek word we translate full assurance and trust in the Bible in the future of a ship carrying over and the full sail its canvas fully stretched out to catch the wind Abraham he took if we Okay. Mm -hmm. 